Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing the main causes of injury at the keyboard. Now, I'm not going to go through every single cause of injury at the keyboard in this video because it would be like hours long. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to break it up into a couple different videos. So make sure and be on the lookout for those. So today we're going to be talking about the first cause of injury at the keyboard, and that is key bedding. So let's go ahead and just start by defining what key bedding is. So basically, key bedding is when we play a key, we press it down, and then we continue to push into the key um, after we have played it. And then I play another key, and I continue to press into the key with lots of uh, force. And it's important to realize that this is a very inefficient way of playing the keyboard because not only am I wasting a lot of effort by continuing to press down, but also all of these muscles and ligaments in my hand and arm are sort of being tied up. And you can actually just experiment with this. So just go ahead and you can be really any flat surface or it can even be a keyboard. Just press down with one finger and, and make sure that you have really a good amount of, of uh, pressure. And try to move your other fingers. And notice, it seems like especially the thumb, at least with the second finger here, uh, it's, it feels very awkward and tight. I don't feel free and mobile when I move my other fingers. Now, just shake out your hand, make sure you get rid of all that tension. I want you to just set your finger down, okay? And make sure you're not pushing, it's, it's just sort of resting on there, okay? Pretend like you're, you're, you're touching something and you're trying to be incredibly delicate, okay? And you're, you're just touching it, but you're allowing it to sort of stay in contact even if you move slightly. Now, feel, feel the difference in how your other fingers or your thumb feel, okay? So immediately what you'll discover is that uh, key bedding like that, so pressing into the keys and continuing to press is a very inefficient way of playing the keyboard because of that wasted effort, but also because it's tying up all of the muscles and ligaments so that I can't even move my other fingers very freely. Now, it's important to understand what key bedding is not. Um, the term key bedding was coined uh, somewhere around 100 years ago by a, a pedagogue. Um, but it's, it's become a fairly common concept, but oftentimes people think key bedding is, you know, sort of pressing into the key and having too much pressure, right? So the sort of idea there is, is that it's okay to continue to press into the key as long as it's not too much pressure. But this fundamentally misunderstands what key bedding actually is. It's the act of pressing the key after it's sounded, it's continuing to apply any amount of effort, right? This key goes down with, with very little effort, and so any amount of pressure, right, other than what's absolutely necessary to keep it down, is wasted effort, okay? And so I would argue that what you want is you want to just be able to sit in the bottom of the key, right? Sort of like you're standing up, okay? so. Let's say you're, you're standing on two feet, you know, you don't want to press into the ground to hold yourself up. I mean, you just think about that for a moment and you realize how silly that is. When all you're doing is you're just, your feet are resting on the ground and you're just supporting your weight. That's it, right? And so it's the same thing when we play the piano, um, is that I can't, even if, even if I'm pressing a little bit, that's still key bedding. Um, and ultimately, because if we, if we play the piano like this, we're going to be slowly building tension, okay? Because it's not like, okay, I'm pressing with this finger and then this finger releases and then this finger is pressing, right? Though that might somewhat be true, the thing is, is that all of my, my muscles and my ligaments and everything, they, they all sort of work independently and so it's, the overall tension in the hand and arm is just going to be slowly accumulating and building. 
Now, oftentimes people try to fix this problem by the sort of press and release sort of idea. So they'll say, okay, what you need to do is you need to press the key and then release everything. And then press the key and then release everything. And then press the key and then release everything. But again, the problem with that is that how easy is that to do when you're playing really, really fast? I mean, how much thought and effort has to go into every single note in order to do that, rather than just changing how you approach playing a key. So for instance, rather than just pushing key bedding and then stopping, you know, then not, you know, not doing that anymore. What if we play a key in a way that never builds any tension and we don't have to release the kind of excessive force, right, that we're putting into the keys. Um, and that's really just the idea of, of using the weight of your arm and hand, right? I mean, sometimes I'll just have students do this where I'll say, okay, you know, just make kind of a loose fist and just let your arm just fall into the keys. And then just sit there, right? Just let your arm totally relax, just resting there. How easy is that? Are you releasing anything? No. Are you relaxing anything? Well, you're making sure that your arm is loose so that you feel like you're just sitting there, right? And not pressing into the keys. But again, it's, it's, a, it's a very different way of approaching the keyboard. And so um, it's very important that when we play the piano, that every single time we play, we play and we just feel like we're just resting at the bottom of the key, right? and I play another note, and I'm just resting. I'm just sitting at the bottom of the keyboard bed, I'm just resting, so that we're free and mobile to move up and down the keyboard. Our fingers can move and have a certain amount of agility and freedom, which will allow us to not build tension and, and um, be much more mobile at the keyboard, okay? So I like to think of playing the key and making sure that I'm at rest at the bottom of the key. Sort of like the analogy of, you know, when you, when you stand on your own two legs, you're at rest in that position. It's not a tense, laborious sort of activity. It's, it's very easy because all you're doing is stabilizing your joints so that you can support that weight and it just goes into the ground. Well, it's the same thing when we play the piano, right? We just stand there deliver that weight into the bottom of the keyboard bed and just simply stand there. Um, and so this is a very common cause of uh, tension and even injury at the keyboard. And uh, recently I just uh, started a new student uh, online and we I sort of discovered that this student was uh, severely key bedding or, you know, pressing and continuing to press in the keys and just some simple exercises of learning to just you know relax your arm and then just let it fall into your lap and just rest there and um, immediately the 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 student was like oh my gosh that feels completely different and it was sort of a really interesting experience um and so i find that this is a very very common cause of like i said tension so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.